jacket today. Not smart. I'm gonna, today I'm gonna wind up this series that we started some time back called The Story of Us. Uh, you guys enjoyed this series? I've, I found out recently that it wasn't for you. That, that it was pretty much for me, so that's a good thing. Uh, today, I want to get us to the promised land. Y'all want to go to the promised land? Yeah. Yeah, the promised land's good. And, uh, and so, um, we're going to, as the children of Israel, uh, the 12 tribes of Jacob came out, they found themselves in the wilderness, which was a weird, weird thing for them because they were delivered out of slavery into the wilderness. And, and that's, a, that's a crazy thing because you think, oh, we're right, great, we're getting out of slavery, out of bondage. But then we get to the wilderness and it's like, well, we were better off in slavery. And they keep doing this with Moses. Remember, we've talked about this, how they were every, at every turn they were like, oh, I wish we were back in slavery. At least we could die there, you know, eating uh, what was it, standing by the meat pots, which I still haven't figured out what that was, but it still sounds good. And instead, they're out complaining, uh, we don't have anything to eat, and we hate this manna you're providing for us. Remember we talked about that last week, the what is it? Uh, the what is it? And then, and then Moses takes them to uh, the mountain of God and, and uh, talked about how this is, this is the covenant that God is making with his people. He gives them his law. And, and it's a very good thing because you've got to remember they didn't have the Holy Spirit. So they didn't know how to function without, without rules. God said that someday he would take his laws and actually write them on our hearts. And, and, and that we would no, no longer need man to teach us these laws, these rights and wrongs. That we would know the will of God. That we would know right and wrong. And a lot of people think, oh, yeah, that's great for Christians. But that wasn't what it said. Mankind knows right from wrong. I don't care how depraved you are or, or how messed up you are. I mean, you, you may be real jacked up, which is cool. I mean, go for it. Do whatever. But, but like still, you have a moral compass. People have that within them because, because God puts his will in our hearts. And, and the truth is, like, I mean, nobody will admit this, but the truth really is that we choose to hurt each other. We choose to sin against God. We, we choose these things that we do. We make a conscious choice even though we, inside us we know the difference between right and wrong. And a lot of times we'll just look around and find somebody to justify what we're doing. And so this is kind of what happens. So God gives them His law. Then He takes them to this place after 40 years. 40 years. That's like Almost half of dad's life. <laughs> Forty years. <laughs> so they spend 40 years. And 40 years in the desert, we think, oh man, this desert, this wilderness experience, it's just terrible, man. I hate the desert. I hate the wilderness. As Chance will say, the wilderness is Mars, right? Like, it's Mars. And it's the surface of Mars. Uh, it's terrible. Oh, we don't... But man, here's the deal, like the wilderness is very good for us. Because what the wilderness did, it grew people up. A generation was born that had not known slavery. A generation was born that wasn't whining and complaining all the time, saying, oh man, if we could just go back, if we could just go back. A new generation was born. People toughened up. People learned to trust God. People learn to walk in this covenant. Uh, people learn uh, this new way of being free. Because remember, man, they had been in slavery for, for over 400 years. So that, that generation kind of burned down and, and the next generation kind of rose up. And I think about that story and that story, how it's the story of us. It's the story really of us because when we started this church, man, our passion, and I mean our passion and our drive was, 
was that we were going to change the way church is. I didn't ever want anybody to walk into a church again and go, man, they're, they're judging me. I wanted a place that was so authentic, a place that you could be you with all the flaws that we all have. I wanted a place where you could worship freely, where you could worship loud, where you could take your shoes off and you could dance and you could sing at the top of your lungs and your neighbor wouldn't have to hear you. Amen? I get asked all the time, why has the music got to be so loud? Because most of you can't sing. <laughs> but when it's that loud, we're all rock stars. It's an angelic choir, right? I wanted a place where if you just came out of prison and everybody in society is against you and everybody's down on you, you could come here and, and you could be you and you didn't have to hide it and you didn't have to, to disguise it. You could be you. Yeah. I want a place where you could walk in with your tattoos just boldly showing. And man, not only that, but you guys are like, guess what I got? Guess what I, no, it's, <laughs> don't, don't show us them. But that's okay too if that's you. I mean, you know, whatever floats your boat. I'm going to tell you all something about myself. I thought if I ever got a tattoo, I would get a genie. <laughs> I just had some smoke coming up. I don't know why, I just thought it'd be funny, man. My mom didn't know that, and she's probably pretty embarrassed. <laughs> what she don't know is I got it. No. <laughs> no. I wanted a place that you could experience complete and total freedom. And I feel like when I walk into this place, unlike any other place I've ever been, I can breathe. Amen. And I don't have to worry about what I did last night and all the things that are on me when I come in here because somehow that stuff just becomes secondary. That we could just be here and be together. And that we could just, just seek out what God looks like to us because it's hard to be told what God is and like you got to fit into this and you got to do it this way and I, I can't stand the pretentious religious talk that says God is this because my God can never be described he's never this he's in me and I'm in him and that's undescribable and he loves me and he loves me so so much and he loves you so so much and you didn't earn it and you can't change that no matter what you do from this point forward you can't make God love you any less or any more and we're all special and we think sometimes that, man, God loves me that way, but he, he doesn't love them that way. But that's just not true, and that's not true especially here, because it don't matter who they are. I hate those words, they and them and we and us. Uh, it, we are them. We are they. And God loves them as much as he loves us. See, we got this idea that in Christianity there are those that are in and those that are out, and that's just not true. It's not true at all. There is no ins and outs. It's just humanity in a covenant with a God who loves us. And that's what this place was built on. And that's what we have done here. And I'm telling you this, that the wilderness is tough because we left bondage 
And we stepped out. And when we crossed that Red Sea and God parted that sea and we walked into it, it was wilderness. And it's been tough because it's been tough for me because we're all a little more religious and a little more bent toward self-centeredness and a little more bent toward religion, a little more bent toward a God that is for some and against others than we'd like to admit, right? So we have to go through that wilderness. We go through that wilderness and those things start to get burned off and we start to realize, wait, God's providing for me and you and them. And He's loving us. And we go through that wilderness, man, and, and we find God's will. And we start to discover there's a different way to live. That if we live this way, we live at peace with God. And we live it this way, we live in this, in this uh place of discipline like we're a child that is that is out of sorts with a parent and we have this this feeling that things aren't right with us and there's a there's shame moving in to your parents when you're out of their will like when you go to your mom and you disobeyed and 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 even when you're 47 and you have to tell your mom things you know and you're you, you go in with your head down and And it's not better to live that way. We discover in the wilderness that it's way better to live in the will of our God. And we actually discover that in God there is life, what we call life. Not breathing in and out because that's not living, but there is life. Like we walk in the will of God, we're like, I hear this all the time. I didn't know it could be this good. I didn't know. Because we live in an illusion that we're alive until we become alive. Like dead people call death life because they've never experienced anything different. But when we're resurrected and born into a new person, a new creation, and the old life is gone and we're born and we're made different, we we come into a full understanding that we are in God and He's in us and that He loves us very, 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 very much. And it changes us. And we're never the same. And all of this happens in the wilderness, and we grow up. And Moses came to the, to the Jordan River, and his journey ended. And he anointed Joshua and said, Follow the will of God. And lead these people to the promised land. Take them to a place that they've never experienced. Take them to a place flowing with milk and honey. Listen, there's there's giant food in the land. Like I've seen those those pictures of them carrying the grapes out of the promised land on these poles that are those uh, basketballs. But if there's giant fruit in the land, what else does that mean? There's giants in the land. It's going to be... It's going to be a battle. But it's still the promised land. And I will be with you every step you take. And you will never go where I am not with you. And I need you to get that today. That God will never... You will never go where God is not with you. He will lead you to His land of promise. I've been in the desert for a long time. And I realized that I had been spent and burnt out for a very long time. And I have these highs and these lows and these things that come through. And I've been going through this for a very long time. But I'm here today to tell you that I'm not okay. I'm not healthy. I've been fighting this for eight years. And I was about to die and Chris came along, Chris Wilson came along. And I thought, he's going to take this and he's going to make this and we're going to make it. And you guys, a lot of you guys are here because of him. A lot of you guys came when he came. And like, you could see his energy and his passion and his drive and his life was just huge. 
And then he died. And I thought, I've never felt that way about a man. <laughs> and when I lost him, six months later, I had a heart attack. And two years later, I had a second heart attack. And I've been fighting depression, and I've been fighting everything for so long. And the children of Israel are at the promised land waiting to go in, but there's nobody to take them there because I, I have nothing to give. So today I'm handing my man a off. I love you. You're my friends. You're my family. And I love you so much, but I can't give anymore. I've lost sight of even what I love in life. I don't know what, what I enjoy anymore. So we're, we're leaving and we're going to get healthy. We just have to. But here's the thing. God never takes he never takes something out and leaves the sheep without a shepherd. He never abandons us. God has risen up here in this place, people that are going to leave, that are excited and have passion. And I realized after I made the decision, that I have been choking this place out. And you may not know it. You may not understand it. You may just come here on the weekend and, and, and think, man, everything's great and the worship is great and, and the message is speaking to me. And man, how can you ever replace that? And, and like for, for 15 years, we've poured our lives into this. And I don't want that to be wasted. See, the measure of what your life's worth, and I've learned this by raising my kids because it's it's once they graduate and once they get on their own that you really see the fruit of, of what's going on. My mom, God bless her, because me and my brothers were angels growing up and she didn't know what it was like to have hellions. <laughs> no, I meant that the other way around. Like she raised hellions growing up and didn't know what it was like to have angels. But me and my brothers, man, we, we were grounded. We, she had raised us in a way that when it came down to where the rubber meets the road, we were good. And all of us are living a fruitful life. And we all love God. And we all trust God with our daily lives. All of us live in a way that we know that we have manna today. And even when we can't see tomorrow and how it's going to turn out, we trust that there's manna tomorrow. The church is going to go through some changes, obviously, right? But it's got a soul. It's been birthed into this way of life. And as we, as we anoint our Joshua, as we, as we anoint our next leaders, they're going to have their way to conquer the promised land. And it's going to be with energy, and it's going to be with passion, and it's going to be with drive, and things that some of you guys have never known since you've been here. Because at one time, this place was vibrating. And if you've been around here from eight years or longer, you remember the times when this place was vibrating. And if you were here when Chris was here, you remember when this place was vibrating. And that's where it's going. I say this with the most sincere heart. I can say this. 
the best days of this place are ahead. Today I need to bring our next leaders up. And here's the good news for you. It's our own. Because you have to have the DNA to lead the body. A head can't have a different DNA than the body, right? It just doesn't work. And so after a long time, and this is like, this is just God opening every door and laying every single thing out in his timing because none of this was known. Listen, I didn't know myself till last Sunday afternoon. It's that, it's that fast that God moves, that he opens doors, that he, that he does things. And when that all came together, it was crushing, but at the same time exhilarating. And so, I would like to introduce to you Brian Taylor, if you'll come up. Brian is going to... Yeah. Me and Brian have talked for years about what ifs and what it looks like for the next generation to have church. And he calls me old. And we fight, and I have to put him back in his place. No, I'm kidding, like... Brian's heart and his passion is you. His heart and his passion is that this become what God intends it to become. And listen, if you've come here for me, man, for all this time, or like, and I've heard people say, man, Todd just has this way. I don't have any way. God has this way. God is why you're here. Not me. Not Celia. God is why you're here, and God is going to care for you and lead you, but God is going to anoint Brian to take my mantle and carry this forward. I didn't waste 15 years. This is the next 100 years, maybe 95. I don't know. How old are you like? 95 years or so. But that's not all. Because even more proud than I am of Brian is that the worship mantle is being handed off to my daughter, Justice. <laughs> and man, you think you're proud of your kids like when they get a good grade or like punch a kid out or whatever. I mean, I don't know, people are proud for different things. But to have your kids step up, come on up, Justy. And so you can come up here. To be able to hand off, and she's like, I always thought that I would end up taking this. But I thought I'd be 40 <laughs> when I did. But this is the next generation. Like they get, they get it. They get the things that I don't get. And so, this is who we are giving this and entrusting this to. And guys, they're going to need your support. It, it's not going to happen. It's not going to function like it used to. Like, y'all, a lot of you weren't here, but this church grew me up. And, and you guys are going to have to take responsibility to grow in them into the leaders that God has established them to be. I want to ask that our board of directors would come up. And Vance is working today, but if Stephen, uh, Tim, Dad, and Jason, it's, okay, yeah, if you guys would come up. I want our staff, Howard, Brenda, Scott, Amber, if you guys would come up. Julie. <laughs> these are the people, guys, that are going to, these are the people that are going to take you where you want to go, where you want to be. 
And what you don't realize is that they've been doing it all along because I haven't had it. And really, more times than not, and I have to apologize, especially to Scott and Amber, because since they've been here, I've been so burnt out. In my last two, three youth ministries I served in, I served under pastors that were burnt out. And it was the most frustrating ministry I had ever done. And guys, I'm sorry. I've suppressed all the passion out of this group of people that, that wanted more. But it's time to step aside and let you guys live and let you guys breathe and let you guys become everything that God wanted you to become. What I want to do is I want our leadership to, to lay hands on and pray over them because me and Celia are going to pass our mantle. Now Joshua did this. Moses did this to Joshua, but that wasn't just the way it worked. Every king of Israel that ever came was anointed by the king that was coming in. You pass the mantle on to the next generation, and you give them the spirit, to the leading spirit and the authority that God has given you. See, if you don't understand authority, this place only operates under the authority of God. That's why nobody else can lead here with me here. Because there can't be two leaders. There can't be two anointings for one thing or else it's disastrous. So Celia and I will pass our anointing on. And guys, I want to tell you, this is our church home. This is our home. And, and, and when we come into town, we're going to be moving. But when we come into town, I'm going to come see my kid. And I expect to see you. I expect you guys to support them the way you've supported us. Maybe better. Hint. <laughs> right. Maybe better. But I'm going to pray for them and then we're going to dismiss. And guys, I know you feel like you just got hit in the head with a baseball bat. I, I feel that way for a week now. I'm like being all numb and hummy. And you may be feeling some of that. But like, uh, hummy. That's a move of the spirit. Humminess. Uh, I was saying something before I'm distracting myself. We feel like we've been hit with the baseball bat. Oh yeah, you guys. <laughs> Right, thanks, Daniel. At least somebody's listening. I'm not even listening myself. You guys are going to go through this, and it's going to be, you're going to not know how to function or, or, I mean, how to process it because, like, there's mental parts and there's emotional parts, and, like, you can know God's with us and God's for us, but then there's these emotional things that are like, and so there's this thing goes on, and it's, it's tough, but... But after you, and as you process, I think if you will give these people a chance, you're going to get to experience something that if you haven't been here in eight years, you've never experienced before. Oh my gosh, man, I'm having deja vu like I've done this before. I don't remember if that's what we did or not. But that's, Have y'all ever done that? Like, I just looked out here, and I've been here before. All right. So here, we're going to pray over there, and I'm going to get off the acid or whatever it is. I'm going to come down. Um, if you guys would stand with us, though, man, and... I know... I know it's hard to... To deal with right now process but we do love you some of you guys may be hurt right now because I didn't come to you personally but I don't think it's fair to anybody to tell one person and not tell another person you know because you're all my family and so this is me telling you guys like and, and y'all Facebook it around town or whatever y'all do, I don't know, but, but nobody out there knows, you guys know, and then, and then, that's it. And don't cry. <laughs> okay.
So, guys, would you come in and lay hands? God, we thank you so, 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 so much for this church. God, for the spirit of this church and the heartbeat of this church. And God, this is just part of life. The, the saying goodbyes and the saying hellos, it's just part of, of life. And so God, I pray that you would help us all deal with, with this in a way that pleases you and that honors you. But God, right now, in one of the proudest moments of my life and one of the most painful at the same time, God, I pass the mantle to Brian and to justice that they can take the gifts and the talents and the things that you've given them, God, and that they can take the anointing and the special blessing that you've given us and that they can take that and they can lead this place with passion, with energy, with vision. But God, all the time, remember in the heartbeat of this place that it is a place of absolute authenticity and honesty, God. That it is a place of love and, and real, unconditional love. God, I'm excited to see what you do in the lives of, of them and the lives of this church. God, just take it and make it into the greatest thing you've ever made anything into. We worship you with our lives and we give ourselves to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks, guys.